Yuta Watanabe is having a moment. A few months ago, he was wasting away in free agency, and now he's improbably leading the entire NBA in three-point shooting. Here's everything you need to know about how the sharpshooter from Japan went from a three-star recruit to a key cog in Brooklyn's offense. Of course, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos if you're new. Yuta Watanabe was born in Yokohama, Japan. Basketball ran in the Watanabe family as both his parents and sister played at the pro level, with his mom even representing the Japanese national team. He played his first two years of high school basketball at Jinsei Gakuen High School in Kagawa, where he led their team to a second place finish in the All Japan High School Basketball Tournament. Dubbed the chosen one by the Japan Times, Watanabe was outgrowing the competitive basketball scene in Japan and made the move to the United States to advance his careers. With dreams of playing in the NCAA and the NBA in mind, he began the next phase of his basketball journey with the St. Thomas More Preparatory School in Oakdale, Connecticut. Watanabe had a strong showing on the prep school circuit and graduated high school as a three-star recruit by ESPN and rivals. Despite his impressive 6'8 frame, Watanabe wasn't heavily recruited. Then again, Japanese-born players were a rarity in the NCAA D1 ranks. Watanabe actually became the first ever Japanese-born player to get a D1 basketball scholarship and only the fourth ever to even play at that level. Watanabe received multiple offers including two from his top choices in George Washington University and Fordham University, but opted to head to George Washington in DC not knowing he'd make his way back to NYC some eight years later. Watanabe committed to GWU in 2014 but didn't make his debut until November 14th. That was less to do with Watanabe's skills and more to do with a very crowded Colonials recruiting class. Playing time may have been hard to come by, but once he got it, Watanabe made the most of it. The following month, he was recognized as the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week and went on to solidify his place in the lineup as a key bench player and important rotation piece. Watanabe built off his first year's success with an impressive sophomore campaign where he helped the Colonials win the 2016 National Invitation Tournament. The NIT victory was the first time in school history that the program won a postseason championship and his efforts on the defensive end were particularly noteworthy as he blocked an impressive 40 shots. By his senior year, Watanabe continued to achieve things no one in the program's history had ever done before when he won the Atlantic 10 Defensive Player of the Year award. By the time his college career wrapped, he finished as George Washington's second all-time leader in block shots and 15th in scoring. Unfortunately, just like Watanabe was overlooked coming out of high school, he would again be passed over out of college. He went undrafted in 2018 and actually played briefly for the Brooklyn Nets during Summer League before the Memphis Grizzlies lured him away with a two-way contract. Over the next two seasons, Watanabe logged 33 games for the Grizzlies, becoming just the second Japanese player to ever play in the NBA. Despite not seeing significant playing time for the Grizzlies, Watanabe played great for the Memphis Hustle. He averaged 14.2 points, 7.2 rebounds, 2.6 assists, and 1.1 blocks in his first season and increased his scoring to 17.2 points the following year. Watanabe's improvement on the offensive side of the ball was too much for the Toronto Raptors to ignore, and in 2020, they signed him to an Exhibition 10 deal to join their preseason roster. Watanabe made the team and had his deal converted into a two-way contract with the plan to split time between the Raptors and their G League affiliate, like his two years in Memphis. But Watanabe's solid play kept him on the Raptors, and he never ended up suiting up for the Raptors 905. Instead, Watanabe played in 88 combined games for the big club and even four playoff games over the next two years. Watanabe's time in Toronto showed that he could be a valuable role player in the league. Despite not being a big name, he was beloved in niche NBA circles for his intelligence, intensity, and double-double prowess. The only real knock against him was a lack of a consistent jump shot, which is something that is clearly behind him nowadays. In 14 games this season, Watanabe is shooting the absolute lights out. In 10 of those games, Watanabe has shot 50% or more from downtown, which is good for a league-leading 57.1%. While playing just over 18 minutes, Watanabe is averaging 8.1 points per game, a figure that's likely to increase as he earns more playing time and maybe even some appearances in the starting lineup. Regardless, the fact that a team is getting such valuable minutes and production from a player on a non-guaranteed contract is 
nothing short of spectacular. Nets fans love him for it, and so do his teammates. Speaking about Watanabe and his blazing start, Kevin Durant said he's playing great. We love his energy, he's hitting big shots for us, so you always get excited for your teammates, especially guys who come in and don't necessarily have a guaranteed spot on the team, but work their way into the rotation and put their imprint on the game from day one. Not a lot has gone right for the Brooklyn Nets this season, but Watanabe has been a massive bright spot. Nets GM Sean Marks has a history of finding hidden gems over the years with guys like Joe Harris and Spencer Dinwiddie, but we haven't seen any breakout quite like Utah Watanabe. Due to the non-guaranteed nature of his deal, Watanabe's contract can't be restructured until January 10th, but it's safe to say that Utah's got a tremendous future in Brooklyn for many years to come. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and of course subscribe for more videos if you're new.